Order, order. I remind honourable members that there have been some changes to normal practice in order to support the new call list system and to ensure that social distancing can be respected. Members should sanitise their microphones using the cleaning materials provided before they use them and respect the one-way system around the room. Members should speak only from the horseshoe. Members can only speak if they are on the call list. This applies even if debates are undersubscribed. Members cannot join the debate if they are not on the call list. Members are not expected to remain for the wind-ups. I remind honourable members that there is less of an expectation that members stay for the next two speeches once they have spoken. This is to help manage attendance in the room. Members may wish to stay beyond a speech, but should be aware that doing so may prevent other members in seats in the public gallery from moving to the seats on the horseshoe. I call uh, Tonya Antoniazzi uh, to move the motion. I beg to move that this House has considered e-petition 276425 relating to the sale of fireworks. Thank you, Mr Mundell, and it is a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship and an honour to lead for the Petitions Committee on this debate. Once again, we're having this debate in the run-up to the 5th of November, where we mark the foiling of the gunpowder plot in 1605. As we speak, we are only metres away from where Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Palace of Westminster and kill King James I. I would firstly like to thank Elizabeth Harden, who set up this petition, and the people who have signed this petition and other petitions like it over many years. Lots of colleagues have requested to speak in this very important debate today, but due to the restrictions on numbers in Westminster Hall and other proceedings, they are unable to make their constituents' voices heard. But I stand here to represent many of their views. This is such an emotive subject, and I have been contacted by hundreds of people about this. No one can deny that a well-organised firework display is one of the things lots of people look forward to as the nights draw in. But the distress and danger that fireworks can cause to people with disabilities or health conditions, small children, wild animals and pets need to be considered throughout this debate. Marge Williams, my constituent and friend from the village where I live of Pontedillis, has emailed me to express her frustrations about Guy Fawkes Night and suggests that if we can't stop the sale of fireworks altogether, then perhaps they should only be sold for licensed events rather than to gen the general public, and that such events should be restricted to one night only, not four or five consecutive nights. Now, as MPs, I am sure we have all received emails from constituents outlining the terrible effect of unplanned fireworks have been set off, and often as early as October. And I'm afraid that this year, while we are currently living through the second wave of coronavirus, the consequences of the sale of fireworks and an increase in home displays will be the worst ever. We have rightly seen organised displays cancelled, but we haven't seen a ban on the sale of fireworks to the general public. There have been some responsible outlets, some supermarkets making the decision for themselves, but the fact that the sales of fireworks have continued has me means that there has been a rise in firework-related antisocial behaviour and there will be, I'm afraid, more accidents. There are some, st some stark figures we need to highlight in relation to inju injuries caused by fireworks. There were nearly 2,000 vi visits to A&E by people linked to fireworks in 2018 and 19, and in 2018, 4,436 individuals attended A&E because of an injury caused by a firework. NHS England also stated that in the last five years, there has been almost 1,000 hospital admissions relating to the discharge of a firework. Interestingly, as well, in 2019, 35,000 people sought advice from the NHS.UK site on how to treat burns and scalds, peaking at more than 2,800 visits on November the 4th. And what can we expect this year when organised displays won't be happening? It is bound to lead to an increase in demand on emergency services at a time when we should be protecting our NHS. It is just irresponsible. 
How can we morally justify the sale of fireworks in a pandemic? And I do not stand here alone sharing my concerns about the impact that a potential increase in home displays on or around the 5th of November will have on emergency services and the NHS. Of course, nobody plans to have an accident, but any risk taken by individuals, however experienced they are with fireworks, will directly lead to using services that are already under a huge burden and strain. Under normal circumstances, this time of year, especially on the 5th, we have accident and emergency departments under extreme pressure. But the facts are the facts. Fireworks are potentially very dangerous. If we were to be seen to be acting responsibly, then this government should have banned the sale of fireworks, especially this year. These safety concerns are also extended to wildlife and our natural spaces. Without safeguards and professional organisation, the risk of damage to land, livestock and wildlife from errant fireworks is going to be hugely increased. I saw in my own constituency a couple of years ago a horse that through the distress of the fireworks continually going off lost its life. And it's just unacceptable. There are some potential solutions to this ongoing issue. The petitions inquiry give three recommendations to the government. Firstly, a permit scheme run by local authorities that would limit the number of fireworks display in an area. A national awareness scheme on the responsible use of fireworks, including the impact that they can have on veterans and those with PTSD. And on, the, on that point, does my honourable friend give way? Yeah. Many communities up and down the country, our constituencies are now starting to sound like war zones. And on that point, I have a constituent called Richard Smith, who's one of our veterans, um, um, who has given so much to this country, but suffers in particular at this time of year. Um, again, he's an advocate for organised licensed <coughs> events, but also tougher penalties, so, such as fixed term penalties. And I'd like to hear at a later stage the Minister's response in regards to that. Thank you for securing such a brilliant and important debate. I'd like to thank my honourable friend for his comments about his constituent because this is a very much a, a great concern. The noise that fireworks give off when they're used, uh, not just, you know, only in displays, but is, it, it frightens people. It's really quite unacceptable. And you know, that is why the call for those fixed penalty notices is also very, very important. So implementing a rethink of the way fireworks are packaged to limit their appeal to children, to limit their appeal and availability to people who are going to be badly and poorly behaved and not respect them. That is what is needed. But there's also a silent fireworks campaign started by local councillors in Pembrey and Bury Port, a, a town very, very near to the Gower constituency, which suggests that if the sale of fireworks to the general public is to continue, then for the sake of reducing antisocial disturbance and distress to residents, pets and ex armed forces personnel, of which we have spoken, is that any fireworks sold to the public should be silent. Would it really be beyond the wit of man to implement these recommendations and to protect the most vulnerable in our communities and our pets and animals who have no voice in this very important manner? You only have to look at social media to see the impact that fireworks have on people's animals at home whenever they are set off, whatever the occasion throughout the year. And it is why it is our responsibility as members of parliament and for the government to make sure that people are not, and these pets are not, uh, allowed to suffer. The government's response to the petition uh, petitions committee inquiry was wholly inadequate and I hope that the minister will take on board the strength of feeling about this issue in his response today. Thank you. I call Elliot Colburn. 
Thank you, Mr Mundell, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship uh, and as a member of the Petitions Committee, uh, an excellent opportunity for us to share petitioners' concerns here in Parliament this afternoon, and uh, I thank the Member for Gower for her opening remarks as well. Um, in, uh, in marking uh, the opening of this debate, I'd also like to thank the 338 uh, Carshall and Wallington residents who signed this petition, uh, the many more who have sent me emails about it, uh, and to those who took part in my SNAP Facebook poll overnight um, on this issue, um, uh, which was prompted, funnily enough, by me arriving home quite late to hear fireworks being set off, uh, and I'll say a little bit more about that later on. Uh, but just before I rose to speak, I had a check of the, uh, the online poll, uh, and in response to being asked uh, constituents' opinions on uh, what they thought about the uh, petition that we are debating here this afternoon, uh, no fewer than 680 people responded to say that they would like to either see a total ban on the sale of fireworks or at least some level of restriction, uh, whereas 210 people responded to say that they didn't think change was necessary and they would not be happy to see any restrictions on the sale of fireworks. So quite a healthy majority. Um, now, as the member for Gower outlined in her opening remarks, and uh, I, I totally agree, I, I've grown up knowing many a wonderful firework display, um, at, uh, particularly on, on Guy Fawkes Night, in my own Carshall and Wallington constituency. Uh, for example, the ones put on by local scout groups when I was a member of the 6th Carshalton Scout Group, uh, but particularly um, the Carshalton Round Table Fireworks Night that takes place every year. And uh, I see the minister nodding his head. He used to live right next to the park that it took place in, I know, so uh, I know he'll know it very well. Uh, and uh, the Round Table do do a fantastic job and put on a great event. Uh, however, I have heard from many constituents the tales of what can happen when fireworks go off, uh, and from various organisations as well, particularly animal charities, uh, regarding their concerns. And uh, animals do appear to be one of the primary reasons that people have concerns about the general sale of fireworks. Uh, and I know this from personal experience. My uh, older golden retriever, Willow, um, is quite frightened of fireworks. She can't seem to settle down when she hears them going off. Uh, and it's upsetting to see her in that state. Um, but there have also been concerns about antisocial behaviour, and I mentioned I heard fireworks going off last night, and uh, uh, this morning it came to my attention that actually this was as a result um, of, uh, rumoured to be as a result of, uh, I should say, I haven't had confirmation from the police yet, um, but that uh, there was a group of young people letting off fireworks in a pedestrianised square in Wallington Square, uh, which obviously caused significant, da um, significant damage, but also distress to the residents living near the high street. Um, so it's not only highly, it's not only a nuisance, it's actually highly dangerous. And I think the member for Gower again um, outlined that very clearly in her opening remarks. Um, but to address this ongoing issue then, a number of solutions have been offered, both in the petition itself, but also from residents who have contacted me. And I just wanted to touch on a few of them. Uh, the first of which, um, uh, perhaps the most extreme example, was the, uh, the total ban of the sale of fireworks in the United Kingdom and therefore essentially bringing an end to any firework displays happening in the UK. Now, I do think that this is a bit too heavy-handed and I'm sure there are ways that we can find a more balanced approach. Um, and there's been a range of other suggestions, especially around licensing, uh, limiting to formal events only, regulating noise, um, limiting the dates that they can be um, uh, they can be set off, etc. And I know that the government would have um, considered these as part of their call for evidence back in 2018, and the petition itself does call for some of these measures. Uh, now, I know colleagues will want to explore these options in more detail, and uh, to allow colleagues to get in to speak, I will draw my remarks to a close, uh, just by acknowledging the fact that I, I, knew that I do know that the government is currently considering um, evidence that it, that it started to collect back in 2018, and I know that it's currently um, looking at the, con the consultation that happened by the Scottish Government, as well as our inquiry in the Petitions Committee as well. So I'm looking forward um, to seeing what it has to say in response to those two pieces of work. Um, but ultimately, I hope that in doing so, that the Government can find a balanced approach to allow us to continue to enjoy these events, uh, particularly around Guy Fawkes tonight, but also to make sure that we are looking out for those concerns that have been raised by our constituents. Dr Lisa Cameron. Many thanks, and it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship today, Mr Mundell, as my constituency neighbour, and uh, it's nice to see you in the chair in this role. 
Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, the Petitions Committee, uh, Elizabeth Ardell, uh, for the petition, uh, the Honourable Member for Gower, and of course the 845 people in my constituency of East Kilbride, Straven and Les Mahago who have taken the time to sign this petition today. Um, it's an extremely important one and I think it's actually the highest number of constituents that I have had signing a petition to date. Um, so I may stand corrected, but I think that's the case. Um, I think it's um, extremely important that we consider uh, the impact on our NHS uh, of uh, injuries during uh, Guy Fawkes celebrations, uh, which happen um, inadvertently to children, but also um, those assistance uh, dogs and people with disabilities who are impacted. And I declare an interest as chair of the all-party parliamentary group for disability. I also have to declare an interest as the mother of Rossi the dog, uh, my little French bulldog, who becomes extremely unsettled, terrified almost every year at this time when he hears the loud bangs and takes to hiding under uh, my bed. And, and, and also, uh, Rossi is the mascot uh, on our Twitter page for the All Party Dog Advisory Welfare Group that I chair. Uh, so thank you to everybody who has been in touch with me in relation to those roles, as well as those constituents who have lodged concerns today. Um, I think it's clear to see that easy access to fireworks and poor enforcement of existing legislation is having a detrimental impact upon uh, animals, upon pets, um, dogs in particular, uh, domestic and wild animals. Um, and I've received um, briefings from the Dogs Trust, the Cats Protection, Battersea, Blue Cross, Kennel Club and the British Veterinary Association, to name but a few organisations who are very concerned by the impact and uh, feel that it's very important that we have this debate today. Um, the Dogs Trust and Blue Cross are calling for further restrictions around the sale of fireworks, um, limit to licensed public occasions and restrictions to certain times of the year, organised events only. Um, they're saying that quieter fireworks are not um, the absolute solution to this problem as close proximity and prolonged exposure can have a negative impact upon the welfare of animals. However, lower decibel fireworks uh, should be used to reduce the number of animals who are affected. Cats Protection at Battersea and the British Veterinary Association, I note, call for a review of the existing fireworks legislation and their impact upon animal welfare with a view to introducing further restrictions on their use. Um, and the Dogs Trust uh, in 2018 surveyed 2,000 members of the general public. 89% agreed that pets are distressed by fireworks. 79% said they tried to keep their pets inside to limit that distress. And over 50% believed fireworks should be restricted to official displays only. Um, in the Blue Cross survey, 70% of uh, the UK's pets were affected, with dogs topping the list at 64%, followed by cats at 42% and horses at 17%. Owners reported their pets trembling with fear and being physically sick, whilst 45% said the unexpected bangs and noises left their pet hiding away for hours, just like my own Rossi dog. And 21% said their pets had been left scared to go outdoors for days afterwards. So a long-term impact um, beyond the time of the firework display itself. And I do note um, an article which spoke about Brody, uh, the little dog who lost his ear after malicious teenagers set off fireworks next to his head. Um, and the grandmother had to actually chase them away. Um, and he was eventually found hiding down a manhole with maggots in his wounds, but thankfully was rescued to safety. So the impact, I think, cannot be underestimated. Uh, I just want to mention the um, 
words of Peter Egan, who is our patron of the All Party Dog Advisory Welfare Group, who sent um, his views today for today's debate. Fireworks are terrible for animals. Many dogs and cats are simply terrified, not least because of their acute hearing and sense of smell, which is so much more sensitive than ours. Wildlife suffering is rarely discussed, but he does recall the terrible case of the Bideford starling roost, where startled birds were reported as injured and killed from flying into buildings, the river, and even trampled to death. He said there's also a significant risk of terrible physical injury to people, and he himself was hit by a firework when he was aged just nine and still has that scar today. Um, so Peter is saying that fireworks are simply a waste of money and he would prefer if people would donate their firework money to the NHS, particularly this year. Ellen Watson, uh, who is a House of Commons clerk, um, has been on social media speaking about how she was left vulnerable when her guide dog Skip froze terrified by fireworks. And Ellen's Twitter plea was simple and clear. Her words encapsulate the feelings of people right across the UK. Not only do fireworks cause extreme stress to dogs and humans, they pose a risk to disabled people's safety. This has to stop. Fireworks need to be regulated. She added, dogs are often life-changing or life-saving for people, especially assistance dogs. And I just want to briefly touch upon the impact upon those who have post-traumatic stress disorder, particularly our veterans. I declare the interest that my husband himself is a veteran. Um, and I think that we really can't underestimate that issue either. And we must, um, particularly at this time of year when remembrance events are coming upon us, to consider the impact upon our veteran community. Uh, Kerry Snuggs has been uh, speaking about this. She was a police officer and she has post-traumatic stress disorder. And like veterans, she speaks about the impact. Fireworks night is a trigger for many. Those who have served in armed forces and emergency services will have seen so many traumatic incidents that at any point the brain may just say, enough is enough. So please consider those suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder this fireworks day. Um, just to finish, um, I want to thank my constituents once again. As I said, this is an extremely important and acute issue for them, and they've been in touch with me. Uh, they feel very strongly that licensing and limiting of public fireworks sales and use can help people enjoy the spectacle of fireworks shows, but at the same time facilitate compassionate action for families impacted by fireworks stress, carers of people with disability, veterans with PTSD, or the millions of those of us who own dogs, cats, and other companionship animals. So please, um, can we look at this seriously, look at the recommendations of the petitions committee, think about how to take it forward. We're here to represent the public. That's the views that we, we should be considering in terms of legislation and taking it forward. And uh, just to the public, please do not be a firework fiend uh, this year and think about our NHS, the animals who will be affected and those with disabilities and PTSD. Thank you. Christian Wakeford. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and it's a pleasure to be serving under your chairmanship. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking the Petitions Committee for bringing forward this committee, along with the Honourable Member for uh, Gower, uh, along with the 777 uh, residents from my constituency who have signed this petition. Uh, one particular resident, Mr. Cohen, uh, has raised this issue, issue with me uh, several times, uh, for which I am incredibly sympathetic to his concerns uh, and actually uh, echo his calls for greater protections and regulations. Uh, whilst many of us will enjoy organised displays of fireworks on bonfire nights and for New Year, this is unfortunately extended to fireworks being set off for one cause or another throughout the entire year. Just last Friday, whilst sat in my office, uh, still in the uh, early hours of the evening, they were going off in the middle of Radcliffe uh, with no real celebrations going on. It was just antisocial behaviour, which we clearly do need to tackle. Uh, whilst sat here in, in this actual debate already, I've also received another complaint 
uh, about fireworks uh, with, with a complaint about them being set off in Presswich at half past five in the morning, uh, which uh, I think just goes to highlight some of the real concerns residents have because they are set off at all hours in all locations. Uh, and that really is a concern for many. These fireworks cause real problems and fear for pet owners, veterans, those who suffer from dementia, and among many others, parents of young children. My own daughter, Lavinia, was recently spooked by fireworks uh, as I was going through bedtime with her on one of the few nights I get to spend with her when I'm not in this place. Uh, because she was so spooked, rather than just going through her usual bedtime routine, I had to basically nurse her uh, to sleep for over an hour uh, with, with her kind of clung to me, cuddling, because she couldn't go to sleep because she was that worried what was going on with the loud noises. For pet owners, this is compounded, as you can't explain to an animal what is going on. And the unpredictable nature of fireworks make it extremely difficult, if not impossible, for animals to acclimatise to them. We absolutely should be doing more to prevent the use of fireworks outside of organised displays for events such as Diwali, Chinese New Year, Bonfire Night and New Year. Enforcement, however, is clearly not possible. By the time the police will get to a location where fireworks are being set off, the perpetrators have absconded. There are, however, ways to tackle illegal firework use, for which the RSPCA themselves have actually recommended. We can reduce the time retailers can sell fireworks to specific dates to fit around the previously mentioned uh, events. We can look at reducing the noise level of fireworks to 90 decibels, as has been recommended, to insist in mitigating the distress to vulnerable groups and animals. Licensing of all public firework displays, which will require all public displays to be licensed by their local authority, would go a, a long way to actually attack, uh, tackling this issue. However, I will go further and push for all firework displays uh, to be available for use in licensed public displays only and su suggest a ban of all pop-up shops selling fireworks. This isn't a bid to reduce public, the public's enjoyment, but to actually protect the health and well-being of the nation's pets and those who are most likely to suffer from the inappropriate and illegal use of fireworks. The current laws that have been in place for many years are clearly insufficient to address these concerns and really do need to be updated to protect the most vulnerable while still allowing licensed public events for the nation to enjoy. The government really should and must do more to tackle these concerns uh, and the fear experienced by many uh, in the nation. And I, I think for a debate such as this, it, it clearly does go to show that uh, whilst we, we may argue uh, in the chamber, actually in, in Westminster, we, we do show uh, a wide level of cross-party support in actually trying to tackle issues like this. Uh, so again, I'd like to uh, commend the Honourable Member uh, for bringing forward this debate. Complete uh, agreement with what she said. And you know, I, I, I hope the Minister is listening and will uh, take these concerns on board to, to look at making sure that we can enjoy these in a compassionate way, uh, as the Honourable Member has previously said. Alex Davies-Jones. And um, I thank my honourable friend, for me the member for the Gower, for so ably introducing this debate, and I am so sorry that I missed her introduction. Um, I would also like to say that it is a privilege to serve under your chairmanship, Mr Mundell, and I rise to speak on behalf of the 636 people in my constituency of Pontypridd who have signed this petition calling for a ban on the sale of fireworks to the general public. This is not the first time that this issue has been discussed in this place. And there have been numerous petitions arguing for greater regulation of fireworks, and yet the government fails to act and fails to take this issue seriously. A few weeks ago, I asked the Leader of the House for a debate to discuss the need for greater regulation of fireworks and raise concern about the impact of fireworks on people with mental illness and on animals and the environment. In a typically dismissive fashion, the Leader of the House said, and I quote, No, I'm sorry, but I won't, because I think the regulations are about, about right and fireworks are fun. Well, I would like to use this opportunity to urge the government once again to take this issue seriously. Now, don't get me wrong, I love fireworks, and I always have. I even had an organised display at my wedding on New Year's Eve. And I love bonfire night too. There is something special about being wrapped up warm in hats, scarves and gloves, the smell in the air, a hot dog in one hand and a toffee apple in the other, watching the magic of fire and colours light up the night sky to the chorus of oohs and ahs. But like everything that's special... Fireworks should be kept for those once-a-year celebrations of bonfire nights and New Year's Eve, not used as a weapon to terrorise communities throughout the months of October, November and December. Every year this debate is held, and every year hundreds of thousands of people sign a petition like this. But this year is different for a whole host of reasons. The coronavirus pandemic means that, sadly, people won't be able to join together to watch organised firework displays as usual. 
and there have been some reports that this is leading to an increase in the number of private firework displays, with the Kennel Club reporting that up to 40% of people between the ages of 16 and 34 are planning a private backyard display. We know that many animals, both domestic pets and wild animals, find fireworks terrifying, with some owners reporting that their pets have to be sedated when fireworks are going off. Why on earth should pet owners have to effectively drug their animals to calm them or reduce anxiety? The noise from fireworks also has a significant effect, not just on animals, but on people too. For elderly people or those with mental health problems such as PTSD, fireworks are genuinely distressing. They can trigger flashbacks and leave elderly people terrified to even leave their homes. And private backyard displays can also tragically be very dangerous. I, only, I know only too well the extent to this. When I was younger, we had fireworks in my back garden and my own father was badly burnt by a rogue sparkler. I'm glad to say that we managed to deal with it at home. It wasn't very serious and all we lost was a t-shirt and he still has got the scars to tell his own story. But I know for others, the tale isn't as easy. Every year, we see horrible reports of people suffering from life-changing injuries and burns and even deaths when private firework displays go so badly wrong. And fireworks are also often associated with antisocial behaviour. There have been a number of incidents in South Wales recently where residents have reported young people throwing fireworks at animals and even directly at people. One woman reported that a firework was thrown at her car while she and her children were both inside. I cannot imagine how terrifying this must have been, and the government have a responsibility to do more to protect people from horrible experiences like this. Finally, I want to take this opportunity to talk about the fantastic work that my own local authority of Romkin and Taff have been doing to draw attention to this issue. Unlike the government, they take this issue seriously and are currently conducting a review on the use of council land for fireworks displays. There needs to be a public safety campaign on the use of fireworks. If the government are not prepared to move to only allowing organised displays, then there are many other things they could do to help keep people safe. They could raise the age of necessary to buy fireworks, they could restrict sales to certain times of the year, and they could empower councils and the police to take more action to tackle the antisocial behaviour with the use of fireworks. This government needs to urgently recognise the broad range of health and safety concerns that have been raised in this debate, and they must take action now before it is too late. Diop. To this. Thank you, Mr Mundell. It's a pleasure to see you in the chair and to, to join colleagues for this annual debate um, on the harms that fireworks cause in many of our communities. And it's with a sense of some frustration, I suppose, that I stand here because we've been doing this now for some years and the government's response continues to ignore the very serious concerns on a cross-party basis that all of us bring to this debate. Um, there were 414 signatures on the, on the petition from uh, constituents in Glasgow Central. And that is reasonably consistent uh, over many years that there are these signatures. And I continue to get concerns raised with me um, again and again. And the Honourable Member for, for Gower mentioned that she gets complaints starting in October. And I think I could probably beat her on that because I complained starting in July this year about fireworks um, from residents. Uh, in Pollock Shields, uh, who live in Maxwell Square, and they said they typically hear a firework every day, always in broad daylight, usually mid-afternoon. And at times I've seen them exploding on the ground in the middle of Maxwell Square when the park is full of children or set off in the middle of the road. Obviously, Mr Mundell, this is hugely concerning uh, that fireworks are being used in such a way when children are nearby. Another person who also um, lives in Pollock Shields emailed me in August to say that they had found fireworks um, again uh, in the park nearby. And they said that the fireworks uh, that they picked up, they picked up the empty casings that get left behind. And the empty casings of those fireworks, again, had very aggressive imagery as well. They weren't for your kind of garden fireworks display. They had pictures of people um, looking intimidating when wearing masks, um, as, if they were about to be, as if they were to be used um, in an aggressive way. And in Pollock Shields in 2018, that was indeed what local residents had found. They found... Um, groups of people on the street using fireworks in an aggressive way against the police, uh, firing them and using them as weapons. And this did lead to uh, myself and, and the First Minister, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, whose constituency this happened in, setting up a task force with local police um, in the area, with community groups, with the fire brigade, with trading standards from the council. And we've worked incredibly hard over the, the, the intervening two years to bring together community response and public shields to try and stop this kind of thing happening again. And I must pay tribute um, to the police, to um, Chief Inspector Ross Allen, to Sergeant Kenny Smith and to Inspector John Menzies, who have done a huge amount of work to make sure that people in Pollock Shields are kept safe from this. And they have um, done 
educating school children. They've done um, citing a mobile police office in Pollock Shields to deal with this. They have additional foot patrols, um, and they're um, doing everything that they can to try and uh, bring together this community response. But Mr. Mandela shouldn't have to do all of that because they should have the power, we should have the powers in Scotland to change the law to make sure that the impact on the communities are not felt in the way that they are. And for other residents in other parts of my constituency, this is also a concern. I have um, residents who live uh, in the um, Templeton's building next to Glasgow Green. And Glasgow Green, as you will know, Mr Mundell, uh, has a significant fireworks display every year um, in the Green. Not this year, unfortunately, which is causing residents a bit of extra concern that people will come to Glasgow Green and use fireworks there anyway, regardless of the social distancing requirements. And Lisa Murray, who chairs the, the Verdi Residents Association, has seen this happening uh, outside her building. And what makes this worse, Mr Mundell, is that that building is also affected uh, by the cladding scandal. So she's incredibly worried that young people using fireworks irresponsibly in her neighbourhood will lead to the whole building going up in flames. Um, so they've had uh, bin fires next to it, uh, next to their, near their building due to the fireworks uh, being put in bins to launch them. Uh, and the residents are, are rightly very scared um, about this. A resident in the Calton uh, wrote to me to say, I can no longer tolerate panic attacks every day and having to call the mental health team due to breakdowns because of the fireworks. Teenagers in my area set fire to a mattress and started throwing fireworks into the fire they started. I'm begging you to please do something. Each year it just gets worse and worse. And I asked the minister what he intends to do to keep that constituent safe from irresponsible use of fireworks. And a resident in Govan Hill says, as you know, the south side of Glasgow has suffered years of misery because of the malicious use of fireworks. We started to hear them at the end of September this year, and now on the 15th of October, my, de my dog is terrified to leave home after dark. This will go on in my area till after the new year. This resident says, I understand that abandoned sales to the general public can have an un unintended consequences. But as a chemistry teacher, I cannot understand why we allowed high-powered explosives to be placed in the public's hands, causing misery and injury. And uh, as my honourable friend uh, from East Kilbride mentioned, uh, this can have impacts on people with disabilities as well. And the Secretary of Shawlands and Strathbungo Community Council has written to say that, uh, that she's aware of an instance where a fire was set off right next to a partially sighted person with a guide dog. So it's clear that people are not using fireworks responsibly uh, and that more needs to be done. The Scottish Government held a consultation on this matter and they got 16,000 responses uh, in this consultation, Mr Mundell, 16,000 responses. And of almost all of those who responded to the consultation, some 94% said they would welcome increased controls over the sale of fireworks. Over three quarters uh, who responded, 87% said that they would welcome a ban on the sale of fireworks. Uh, and the figures um, are very, very clear. But where this falls down, uh, Mr Mundell, is that there has been no response substantially by the UK government uh, to this request from the Scottish government for action. And when this was raised uh, uh, back in 2018, I was told that there was a desktop review going on um, conducted by the Office of Product Safety and Standards. But that really has, seems to have brought absolutely no results whatsoever. And I had a response from, from the Minister just before I came over here to say that the government does not have plans to bring forward additional legislative proposals on fireworks um, because there's a comprehensive regulatory framework already in place. But you hear from members all around this House, from members who aren't here um, because of the, the social distancing restrictions, that this is completely inadequate. We hear this year and year again that the regulatory framework in place is not working. Um, so I would ask the Minister, uh, instead of sort of fobbing off uh, all of our constituents and fobbing off the Scottish Government and fobbing off people who have genuine concerns about the impact on themselves, on their pets, on uh, the wider community, will they devolve the legislation for this matter to allow the Scottish Government, who have the evidence, who have the will, who have the, the uh, understanding of this issue and want to proceed with it, to devolve the relevant powers over fireworks so that my constituents can get a night's sleep? Thank you. Call SNP spokesperson Patricia Gibson. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, and I want to begin by thanking the Honourable Member for Gower for her comprehensive setting out of the problems and the challenges that we face with regards to this issue. And I'm delighted to take part in this debate today, but um, in doing so, I have the sense of deja vu all over again. Now, I've spoken several times on the issue of fireworks um, on behalf of my constituents in North Ayrshire and Arran since 2015. And my view is, and has always been, and will continue to be, that the sale of fireworks should be restricted to those with a licence to deliver 
organised community displays. And I believe that during the restrictions that we are all enduring um, due to COVID-19, this position, this view that I have and is held widely across this parliament and across the UK is that this is more important than ever during COVID-19. Now, as is always the case in these debates, no one has argued and no one would seek to argue that used correctly, fireworks are indeed a very enjoyable spectacle. There are around, there are around some 10 million people across the UK each year in normal times um, who see fireworks as a feature in big events in November, for weddings and all sorts of other celebrations throughout the year. And anyone fortunate enough to have attended such an event will no doubt tell you that it was indeed a marvellous spectacle. However, we also need to take account of the alarm, distress, danger and anxiety that fireworks far too often cause for too many people, for animals, the disruption that they cause to communities when purchased and used irresponsibly by individuals, and we've heard much about that today from right across this chamber. We've also heard a lot about the accidents and injuries caused by fireworks, which are very sobering. We're all aware of the increased pressure that accidents associated with fireworks bring to bear on our public services in normal times. But of course, this year, we are not in normal times. Because of COVID-19, it's been necessary for community firework displays to be cancelled across the United Kingdom. But that creates a particular problem because there are now very genuine fears that this will mean that personal use of fireworks is expected to rise significantly this year, which is likely to lead to more accidents and therefore lead to more pressure on our NHS staff at the worst possible time during a global health pandemic, crystallising further, if it were required, that to sell fireworks to the general public is increasingly hard to justify. We know of the increased pressure that accidents cause in normal times and the, this is a perfect opportunity for the Minister to do something now. Every year from October to January we hear from constituents as we've heard again today who are disrupted and plagued by the irresponsible use of fireworks at all hours of the day and night. Um, under cover of darkness too many people set out deliberately to cause mischief, thinking that it's quite funny, it's a bit of a wheeze to set off fireworks near housing where children or whole families are shaken from their slumbers, pets, cats, dogs scared half to death and elderly people driven into a state of fear and alarm. The effect on horses is well documented as well, with fireworks literally scaring them to death and the effect on veterans, which we've heard about as well, who might be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder following active service. This is a catalogue of unacceptable consequences for the free sale of fireworks. Now, since 2017, we've been told that the creation of the Office for Product Safety and Standards would address many of the concerns which we hear every year about fireworks. Um, and I'm keen to hear of the progress that, that, that has been made on that issue, unless, of course, the Minister, and I hope I'm wrong, unless, of course, the Minister is going to stand up today and tell us that nothing has been done since 2017, when I actually had, had this by his predecessor told us that something would be done by the Office of Product Safety and Standards. Surely the Minister is not going to tell us there's been no progress. It is both ludicrous and frustrating in Scotland that we don't have the power to do anything meaningful about the sale of fireworks. And this lack of control effectively leaves the Scottish Parliament footering, footering at the edges of a problem with no real power to properly address it, despite the fact as we've heard, that a recent consultation by the Scottish Government showed that 87% of people in Scotland, 87%, would welcome a ban on the sale of fireworks to the public. And I urge the Minister to carry out a similar consultation in England, and I think he would find it quite informative. Of course, the Scottish Parliament can restrict when fireworks can be set off, but we all know that irresponsible people who want to set off fireworks don't care about what time it is when they're choosing to set off the fireworks. They don't care whether it's legal to set off a firework at a certain time, and they don't care if it puts other people in a state of alarm, fear, or indeed endangers their safety. Now, fireworks cannot currently be sold to anyone under 18, but 
again, I'm saying it, as I've said, several, several years in a row. So what? We know that children can get hold of them. We also know that those using fireworks irresponsibly are often perfectly entitled under the law to buy them, as it stands. The irresponsible use of, use of fireworks is not confined to those who get hold of them illegally. And that's why more needs to be done to protect communities and elderly, um, those with pets, and a range of people in our communities. Every single member of this parliament will have had constituents telling them about the onslaught of fireworks, about the profound effects that has had on their constituents' quality of life, the effect on their pets, which undergo trembling fits and become withdrawn and very frightened. And of course, this cannot be prepared for because these outbursts of fireworks come from nowhere when someone has fireworks and thinks they'll have a wee bit of fun. Some people think it's a great idea to set off fireworks in the middle of the night, up tenement entrances, or in shared entryways to flats. Now, the sale of fireworks is tightly restricted in the Republic of Ireland. In Northern Ireland, fireworks have long been subjected to some of the strictest laws in the world. Perhaps the Minister will tell us why the rest of the UK is denied similar or greater protection. Even in the United States, the United States, which has liberal gun laws, believe that restrictions on fireworks need to be strict. Now, the current situation in Scotland is nothing short of bizarre. The use of fireworks is, devolve, is a devolved matter, but the sale of fireworks is reserved. Now, it doesn't take a genius to work out that unless you can tackle the way the sale of fireworks operates, who can get their hands on them, you've lost any meaningful influence over who uses them, which makes it extremely difficult to police. We know that our local environmental health and antisocial behaviour teams can and do work hard to tackle the misuse of fireworks in our communities. But that seems to deal with the consequences of the wide availability of fireworks, rather than tackling the fear, alarm and distress, the fire risks and the safety hazards that we've heard so much about today can cause. We need to tackle the real issue of the sale to individuals. We need to tackle the problem at source and be mindful of the fact that fireworks are far more powerful and prevalent today than they were in the past. Now, organised licence displays allow, in normal times, the many people who wish to enjoy fireworks to do so safely. Importantly, they allow local residents to plan ahead, make arrangements to protect their pets and go on with their life. The Dogs Trust says that where public displays are organised, 93% of pet owners alter their plans during the display time to minimise their pet's trauma, which protects their pet's welfare. Now, as for helping pet owners to prepare for the use of fireworks in their neighbourhoods, we can't prepare them because it's not possible to do so when fireworks are going off randomly with no warning. So the solution, as we've heard around the chamber today, is patently obvious to anybody who chooses to look. We need greater restrictions on the sale of fireworks instead of selling them to all and sundry over 18 years old. Organised fireworks dis public displays are a safer option for all our communities and would, and would become the accepted and the welcome norm. So I say to the Minister, it is time, and I hope he appreciates that it is time, to ban the free sale of fireworks, except for public licence dis displays. A ban would mean that we could still enjoy fireworks in our communities. We could enjoy them at New Year displays, at celebrations such as weddings but that they would be out of the hands of those who, by accident or design, put the fear of God into our communities, shaking our children and whole families awake in their beds, alarming older people and causing suffering to animals or perhaps even injury. We need to get the balance right. No one is asking for fireworks to be banned altogether. But I urge the Minister to consider a consultation similar to the one carried out in Scotland. Let's hear what the public think. They need to be part of this conversation so they can inform how we proceed to improve the situation across the UK. And let's see a meaningful response to their concerns. I hope the Minister will indicate his willingness to carry out such a consultation so that real progress can be made. If it cannot be made, then give us the power in Scotland to at least protect our own communities. I call Shadow Minister Dr Alan Whitehead. Well, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mandel. I'd uh, firstly like to congratulate the Honourable Member for Gower on bringing forward this debate uh, this afternoon. 
which I think honourable members uh, across the chamber will agree has been a thorough and thoughtful uh, debate with uh, the issues put squarely on the table as they should be in terms of what, are, what is ahead of us uh, in this debate for the future. And I indeed look forward uh, to hearing uh, in a few moments the Minister's replies to some of those uh, points and suggestions, uh, which I sincerely hope um, will be much more constructive than the uh, response given to my honourable friend, the member for Pontypreeth, um, when she raised this issue with the Leader of the House just recently. The e-petitions, uh, including this one that has brought about the uh, debate uh, this afternoon, um, have attracted uh, nearly three quarters of a million signatures in just uh, three years, and indeed, uh, as the Honourable Member for Glasgow Central points out to us, um, we've participated now, I think, in three Westminster Hall debates on the subject of fireworks in recent years. It is more or less an annual debate, um, and today marks our fourth. That demonstrates not just the public strength of feeling on these issues, but also the extent to which there is a feeling that things are not really moving forward uh, in terms of uh, greater uh, activities as far as uh, the issues that have been raised about fireworks are concerned. So I thank very much the instigators of this petition and everyone who took the time uh, to sign it and bring about the debate today. And since we are talking about numbers, the 400 uh, in my constituency who took part uh, in that petition. Mm -hmm. Clearly the recent announcement that we're going to have a national lockdown from Wednesday this week uh, will have an impact on the plans that people will have uh, to celebrate uh, bonfire night on the 5th of November and indeed we've heard about that in the chamber uh, this afternoon and I'll touch a little on that uh, a little later on but certainly this debate is far more about uh, far more than about this year it is about what we do to improve issues around fireworks well into the future now I think we can all agree and indeed we have agreed uh, around the chamber this afternoon that firework displays where they're run by local groups and charities can not only uh, provide a safe space uh, for firework displays and also a predictable and organized space for firework uh, displays, uh, but they can bring about a sense of place and promoting community cohesion. They can raise funds invested in good local causes. And I think we can agree around this chamber that those are a quintessential way in which to framework uh, firework displays uh, for the future. The fireworks evidence base that was published last Friday afternoon by the product safety and standards um, body tells us that I think approximately 10 million people are now buying and using fireworks each year but 14 million of us attended a public display led by indeed members of the British Pyrotechnic Association uh, in 2019 alone which shows that actually there is a big appetite uh, for these public displays and these safe and organised ways of carrying out uh, the letting off of fireworks and the, also the standards of control that the British Pyrotechnics Association brings uh, to those kind of displays. But it's absolutely right, I think, for MPs to consider how we can better protect people, animals and the planet, not from the realities of firework use under those circumstances, but the particular circumstances of firework misuse. Now, we're very lucky to have some of the world's most respected animal rights advocates uh, operating here in the UK, including the RSPCA, the Kennel Club, and the Dogs Trust, for example. And those organisations do not seem to be calling for an outright ban of fireworks in the UK, but they want to mitigate the significant animal welfare concerns that have indeed been raised this afternoon where possible. And there's broad consensus among those groups that the government could and should be doing much more to protect animals. Some of those organisations are calling for a ban of sales to private individuals so as to limit public displays uh, only to public events. And indeed we've had a big debate on that uh, this afternoon. But it is well understood that loud, high-pitched and intermittent noise can adversely affect large proportions of animals whose hearing is often much more sensitive than those and humans, and we've heard of the effects of fireworks on uh, animals, horses, cats, dogs, uh, many kinds of animals 
um, where they are uh, set off in an, in, in a, in a, an inconsiderate uh, and unpredictable way. There doesn't seem to be quite so much definitive evidence about there, uh, out there to call upon in terms of the effect that fireworks have on wildlife in general, but it is something MPs from all sides of the House have also been raising with the government, and uh, I think it's important that actually we get more information on what the effect of fireworks is on wildlife uh, in the country, and I would uh, urge DEFRA to uh, do some work on that uh, to see what those results come forward um, uh, with. Now, we've heard also a lot about fireworks safety, and we know that there were uh, almost 2,000 occasions where people went to A&E linked to fireworks uh, in the year 2018-19. Over 35,000 people had to seek advice on how to treat burns and scolds from the NHS website. Some of those injuries are serious and life-changing, so let's be absolutely clear, fireworks in the hands of people who are not necessarily well-trained to deal with them safely can be very dangerous indeed. Now, although limited evidence uh, is available at this point, it does suggest that the majority of those fire-related injuries in the UK do occur at private displays in homes or in the streets and not at organised uh, displays. Um, but as has been said uh, this afternoon, um, it does appear that with the lockdown, those firework displays are going to be replaced by a much greater use of fireworks uh, in the home uh, because of the cancellation of organised events and social distancing. And indeed, a recent survey by Blue Cross found that 25% of the people in the UK are considering precisely those firework displays at home this year. So I hope the Minister will update us on what measures he's taking to prepare local authorities and our fire services for these particular circumstances where there will be a much greater call, I think, on health services uh, and public uh, bodies uh, for a response to some of the inevitable things that will happen as a result of that switch from public to private displays. I also want to raise uh, the point that I think hasn't so much been raised this afternoon, but that fireworks packaging and the paraphernalia that comes with them can fall to the ground and litter our green spaces and, of course, are not biodegradable and can cause considerable environmental damage in the process. And, of course, gunpowder is still used in modern fireworks. It throws sulphur, particulates, metal oxides and some organic matter into the atmosphere, some of which does fall to the ground. The bright colours and effects that fireworks dazzle us with are a result of complex chemical concoctions which can emit carbon dioxide and other gases and residues. And indeed, Environmental Protection UK studies suggest that there are noticeable increases in air pollution from particulates and dioxins on and around the 5th of November. But there's widespread disagreements to the extent to which deposits and pollutants caused by fireworks actually affect soil or water sources, and I think we need to be uh, clearer about that uh, for the future. And indeed, with the smaller displays happening at home this year, the effect on air pollution in many of our towns and cities will be, I think, quite substantial uh, as a result. So we are in a, in a situation at the moment where, indeed, we are governed by the 23 Fireworks Act, which Labour brought in and gave powers to impose licences on retailers selling fireworks outside predetermined dates, Bonfire Night, New Year, Chinese New Year in Diwali. It also brought in noise restrictions. It banned the sale of F2 and F3 category fireworks to people on the age of 18 and made sure that F4 category fireworks could only be possessed, that's the most explosive ones, by fireworks professionals. And, of course, it introduced an 11 p.m. curfew in place most of this year. And a breach in those curfews can, in theory, lead to an immediate £90 fixed penalty notice, considerable further fines and potential imprisonment for serial offenders. But as legislators, we know that these laws, without enforcement, are frankly largely meaningless. I think the Minister does need to be clear that a decade of cuts, for example, to local authorities' trading standards and environmental health teams 
has left them woefully under-resourced to tackle road traders or those flouting the rules under the legislation already. And I think if the government is serious about protecting the public animals and the environment from the negative aspects of fireworks, then we need to see investment that allows for proper enforcement of existing legislation. And I would add that I'm among, I think, the many people uh, here this afternoon who indeed uh, do sometimes sit in my bedroom at 1.30 in the morning listening to the sound of fireworks going across my city, as is the, is, is the same in many of in the UK. Now, the Dogs Trust, run by, uh, survey run by YouGov, uh, finds that over half of the British public now thinks that fireworks should now be limited to public display only. And over three quarters believe that fireworks should only be used at certain times of the year too. So it's clear that the case for the government to consider these proposals is building. And I'd like to hear the Minister address those suggestions directly. Many advocacy groups indeed also feel that so-called silent or quiet fireworks, whilst not a panacea, could produce some distress across the board. And we've heard this afternoon, I think from the um, Honourable Member for Carl Shorten and Wellington, about the decibel levels and decreasing those uh, for firework uh, displays. And indeed, I think it's time for the government to consider uh, the, carabal, the current decibel level cap and see what can be done uh, to bring that down. Uh, for centuries, uh, Mr. Mundell, fireworks have brought joy and wonder to us mere mortals, throwing luminous bursts of colour, light, sound and energy into the night sky, and fireworks really are wondrous to behold. But existing legislation is simply not being enforced. The public needs to see the government moving from merely understanding their concerns around animal welfare and all these other issues to actually taking more action. I look forward to hearing what that action is going to be from the Minister this afternoon. Under your chairmanship, it's, uh, I'd also like to pay tribute to the honourable member for Gower, not only for introducing the debate on, the, uh, on behalf of the petitions committee, but for her consi considered speech, and indeed the honourable members uh, across the chamber that have taken part in the debate, uh, and also, and, and obviously the, the people, the 305,000 people that have taken the time to sign uh, this petition. Um, we've heard some. Uh, um, distressing stories about um, uh, the treatment of animals, about antisocial behaviour, with uh, the, the, the um, injuries to, to people. We've also heard about the positive side of fireworks. Um, the, 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 yes, the fun, uh, but the, the benefits, as the Honourable Lady, uh, Member for Pontypridd said on our wedding day, uh, it, they can be um, enjoyable for many, many people, many, many cultures. We heard uh, from my Honourable Friend, um, from Berry South about the Diwali and, uh, and Chinese New Year as well. So we, we often talk about the 5th of November because it's coming up in a few days' time, but there are many other cultures that, uh, that enjoy this. I've been a member of the Petitions Committee. I served for five years before uh, the last general election, and I remember I, was, I served on the uh, committee when we um, dealt with the... Uh, uh, we looked, um, uh, took evidence uh, and came up with our report um, and fireworks is something that comes up year in, year on year. I'll just haste, uh, caution uh, the honourable uh, uh, gentleman when he talks about 750,000 signatures because it was roughly, it was 305,000 this year, 305,000 last year, I think 307,000 the year before. So it's relatively consistent. Whether they're individual sites, you, you, know, you can accumulate them to, three, to individual signatures or whether they are s some people duplicating it. Nonetheless, there's a lot of people. There are a lot of people, and we do need to make sure that we take their concerns into account, whether it's for their animals, whether it's for people's safety, uh, whether it's just for disturbance and antisocial behaviour. Uh, the, the, the petition this year, um, as in previous years, does call for a ban on the sale of fireworks to the public. It highlights the issues about impact uh, fireworks can have on animals and wi wildlife, the environment, and injuries to people. Uh, and they have been debated thoroughly today uh, and in previous, uh, previous debates. We do have to, as we've heard from a number of contributors, uh, consider these matters this year against the backdrop of COVID and the additional considerations that this raises. And I'll come back to that. Uh, the Honourable Lady, uh, the Member for Gower, did, uh, did raise that particularly 
uh, and I'll address that it, it shortly. I empathise with the concerns that have been raised, and we do understand as a government the strong feelings that some people have about fireworks. But we understand with every petition and debate, those who lobby against fireworks will be questioning why the government hasn't banned fireworks or restricted their use since the last debate. So I want to set out here the work that the government has done since the last Westminster Hall debate in November 2018. And I want to explain why a ban on fireworks is not, as we consider it, an appropriate course of action to take. Simply banning something doesn't mean that the issue will disappear. In fact, a ban can often have the opposite effect and create unintended consequences. So let me start with the, with the legislation that we have in place. We have legislation, as we've heard, to regulate the manufacture, the supply, the storage, the possession, the use of, and misuse of fireworks to help ensure public safety. And that does include powers to prosecute those who use them in a dangerous or antisocial uh, manner. Together, the Fireworks Act 2003, the Regulations 2004, and the Pyrotechnics Article Safety Regulations 2015 provide a regulatory framework that seeks to support the enjoyment of fireworks whilst prov providing the tools to effectively manage the risks of, of, of fireworks. Loading local authority trading standards work with retailers to ensure fireworks sold are safe, and they've got a powers to enforce against those who place non-compliant fireworks on the market, including those imported illegally or via the internet. No. I'll give way. He's making a, a confirmatory example. So, uh, during the course of this debate, uh, it was announced that the uh, Commission of Trading Standards in Glasgow have seized 500 fireworks in the city. But that's despite there being 73 premises within the city of Glasgow where you can buy fireworks legally. Would you not, would you not accept that this means that things are just not working? Well, we've, we, it's really important that we do work with development administrations uh, on, um, on, on, to make sure that we can enforce the uh, safety, um, uh, ensure the safety of the public across the UK. I will come in my remarks to so some of the more of the training and the resource that we're putting into uh, to enforcement uh, in a second. But the, the police also have powers to tackle the improper possession and use of fireworks and antisocial behaviour caused by the misuse of fireworks wherever it arises. The Office for Product Safety and Standards, OPSS, does have responsibility in protecting the public, as we've heard today. It's the national regulator for product safety, and it's responsible for leading and coordinating the product safety system. It was created to deliver effective and trusted regulation for consumer products, whilst ensuring the legislative framework it works within is effective and proportionate. The work of OPSS aims to ensure custom consumers are kept safe and can have the confidence in the safety of the products they buy. To deliver this, businesses need to understand and meet their le legal and regulatory obligations. To that end, OPSS has worked with the Chartered Trading and Standards Institute to develop and deliver a series of fireworks training events to frontline trading standards and fire safety officers. Over 200 officers have completed that training, covering 105 local authorities, ensuring that they've got the skills and the knowledge necessary to advise firework sellers of their responsibilities and take enforcement action if necessary. So let me turn to the evidence base, as was referenced, and set in more detail what work has been done. The government's committed to ensuring that all of its policy making is based on evidence. And I'm pleased to say that the evidence base prepared by OPSS was published last week. It contains data and information that's been sourced by drawing on existing data, literature and research, and engaging with a range of groups and organisations, inviting them to submit any data that they may have that's not already public, publicly accessible. So data was sought about the key issues raised in petitions, in correspondence and debate, including noise, injuries and accidents, antisocial behaviour, environmental information and the impact on animals and people. A range of stakeholders have been engaged with, ensuring the evidence base reflects as wide a range of evidence and perspectives as possible. That includes government departments, local authorities, including trading standards teams, the fireworks industry themselves, charities and organisations that represent individuals and advocates for animal safety, the ex-armed forces and the retail sector. In recognition that a key concern is around noise and disturbance, we wanted to consider those issues most often raised, those being that the maximum permitted decibel levels of fireworks to consumer, uh, sold to consumer of 120 decibels is too high, that the suggestion that some fireworks sold to uh, consumers don't adhere to the maximum 120 de decibel level in legislation. That's that the, they're louder than 120 decibels and continue to get louder. And that the government should promote silent or low noise fireworks. 
So we've, um, the, the evidence around the impacts on fireworks on animal health indicates that different species of animals have different sensitivities and responses to noise. Separately, OPSS has commissioned a program of fireworks testing to determine the average decibel level for common types of retail uh, fireworks sold for public, um, for public use. This will evaluate whether fireworks for sale or to consumers placed on the UK market meet the noise provisions in the pyrotechnics article safety regulations in 2015. The Honourable Lady for, uh, Member for Gower talked about silent fireworks and it was mentioned elsewhere. It's not clear whether a, a silent um, firework actually exists because fireworks clearly require some level of explosive content to set off. But however, as part of the evidence-based work, as I say, we have commissioned the testing of, of fireworks to determine the range of decibel levels, and that will help to identify what a lower acceptable uh, de decibel level is. It will, uh, it will, and, and it will also um, uh, look at the potential impl imp uh, impact of such cl classification. We will publish the, re the report into that work in, to due, in due course. The inquiry that I've referred to, that the petitions committee themselves came up with, this isn't a political party thing. This isn't uh, the government not acting. This was a, a cross-party uh, petitions committee chaired by, uh, as now, uh, um, with the Labour chair. Um, the, com the committee concluded at that time it couldn't support a ban of fireworks. Instead, it re recommended other actions. As I set out to, uh, in response to uh, the committee now, the government's policy aligns with the committee's conclusion that it's not appropriate to ban the public from buying and using fireworks as it wouldn't be a proportionate measure. We agree with the inquiry's conclusion that a ban on fireworks, either for private or public use, could have those unintended consequences. We acknowledge the experience of the National Police Chiefs Council, who believe banning fireworks would push the market underground and make it more difficult to regulate and monitor. In addition, a restriction on fireworks sold by the public by retail out to the public by retail outlets could lead to more individuals buying products inappropriately through online social media sources or from outside the UK. Individuals sourcing fireworks from illegitimate or unsafe suppliers may unwittingly buy products that are unsafe as they may not need, uh, meet the UK's safety requirements. So we take the view that the concerns, concerns raised can be best addressed through education and raising awareness about good practice being considerate to neighbours, the impact on people and animals of irresponsible use, alongside ensuring that the public know what action they can take and what the law provides for. So raising awareness around the safe and considerate use of fireworks is a common theme that's come out of our stakeholder engagement. For that reason, OPSS has developed an awareness campaign that launched for this year's 20, uh, fireworks season on the 20th of October. We partnered with the Royal Society for the Prevention of Accidents, ROSPA, Child Accident Prevention Trust, RSPCA, and Chartered Trading Standards Institute on the campaign. We've also worked with a wide range of other stakeholders, including retail bodies, such as the Association for Convenience Stores and the British Retail Consortium, to share the messaging across different audiences. The focus of the campaign, and this is important as we, as we accept the fact that with the, uh, the cancellation of public displays, um, more people may be um, uh, uh, using, uh, having displays in their own back gardens. So the focus of the campaign is to educate people on how to buy, use, store and dispose of fireworks safely, to ensure retailers know and understand their responsibilities when selling fireworks, and to promote considerate use so that people and animals can be better protected from any negative effects that may be caused by fireworks. We've also been uh, working with colleagues in the Scottish Government and the Welsh Assembly to share information and we'll continue to do so. But the, uh, the, the, we make, we've got made sure as well that we're aligning our awareness campaign around the safe use of fireworks with local restrictions on so social gatherings. So I'd like to take this opportunity to emphasise that people must follow the coronavirus restrictions in the local um, area at all times, uh, including if they intend to use uh, fireworks. The, uh, just to cover uh, a few areas as well, I mean, the, 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 we, we heard a lot about animals, uh, rightly so, because as I say, something that when I was on the petitions committee, we took evidence both from the fireworks associations um, and, and retailers and those people affected with horses, with dogs, with other animals, and indeed young children uh, are, are as well as we've heard. So, so it's so important that we do continue to engage with animal, animal welfare organisations to, to make sure that we can understand the impact on animals, to, to work with uh, 
um, the, in our engagement to make sure that, uh, uh, that, that we can promote that responsible use uh, for them uh, as well. But I'd just like to pay tribute, as I say, before I conclude, to all of the, uh, the, the contributions. I was a pleasure to, to, to hear my colleague, um, Honourable friend from Carshall or Wannington, and indeed, um, my Honourable friend from Bury South, both who are uh, showing off how hard they're working, one through uh, the use of social media in his, in, his instant snap poll, the other to show off that he was uh, working in his office on a Friday evening. Uh, good, good, good man. So uh, this is <laughs> so important that this time that we are, I know we're all working really hard for our uh, constituents, but we've also heard uh, from the uh, Honourable Lady from uh, Pontypridd, from, uh, uh, from Glasgow Central, uh, for, and obviously the Shadow Minister from the Southampton Test as well. And, and indeed, the, uh, that horrendous example from uh, the, uh, the Honourable Lady, the member for East Kilbride, um, about I'm glad her dog was not uh, the, the, the one that was, uh, that was so horribly uh, treated in that, in that incident. Um, and I'm, I know she's a great mother to her dog. There, she'll be looking after her on th uh, uh, the, the, the dog on Thursday um, as well. But uh, this, is a, this is an issue that I know comes up time and time again, and it is of concern to people. We believe that with the e extra evidence that we're gathering through the OPSS, with the e extra awareness campaigns that we, are, that we are launching earlier and in more detail and, in, and to a larger extent, each year that we can start to tackle this in a balanced and proportionate way. But in conclusion, Mr. Mundell, I'd just like to thank everybody again who's taken part in this debate. And again, I, take, I pay tribute to the work of the Petitions Committee. Thank you. I call the Honourable Member for Gower to respond to the debate, and you have up to 14 minutes. <laughs> That's extremely kind, Mr. Mundell, and I shall endeavour to, to keep everybody busy for the next 14 minutes. But I'd like to thank the Minister for his response um, and I'd like to also share the view of the Honourable Member from Glasgow Central um, uh, because when she brought up about a chemistry teacher being very concerned about such explosives being in the hands of the inexperienced, I think as a teacher for 20 years, it is something that really strikes me because however much we are, there are campaigns it, the message is just not getting through and that's how the petitioners feel that that message isn't getting through and and again as as, as the member for north Ayrshire has pointed out we do have a sense of deja vu and while i respect that there has been a campaign since the 20th of october is the 20th of october really uh, early enough it isn't and it's not satisfactory because i can tell you this year i haven't seen anything and as a mother of a 16-year-old son who has always disliked fireworks and because of the noise, I really do appreciate that it isn't a pleasant experience for everyone. But I'd like to take the opportunity also to thank the 131 members of my constituency of Gower for signing this petition. We have made so many sacrifices since March this year that... Is it, you know, I'd like to pay tribute to everybody in the NHS and the emergency services, particularly the fire brigade, because the next week and the next coming days are not going to be easy for them. And I think we're agreed across this, uh, this Westminster Hall that we really do have to think about what the impact of having home displays will have, because it is absolutely horrific. Uh, and potentially very, very dangerous. And I do agree with the Honourable Member for Berry South about a ban on all pop-up shops. And I'm not being a killjoy. I just feel that, you know, whereas the Leader of the House has mentioned to my Honourable Friend from Pont of Preeth about fireworks being fun, I spent many, many years my, where, where I grew up overlooking the Straddy Park, the very famous Letty Scarless Rugby Stadium, where every 5th of November we, ha we sat with our hot dogs and we watched the fireworks and we enjoyed them. But things have changed, and as has been men mentioned today, they've changed, and people are using them as weapons, and we have to do more. And I do hope that we will keep on pressing the government and working with the police, working with the emergency services to improve the situation. Because having always had a dog in the house as well, I know my, my mother has two dogs currently from the Dogs Trust. It's frightening for them because they don't understand. And 
we have to work with everybody. And just to say, Minister, I know I appreciate your time on the Petitions Committee, so you know your way around these debates very, very well. But we do need to do more, and we must do more for the sake of everybody and for the safety of everybody, particularly with the light of coronavirus shines on us. Thank you, Mr Chair. Yeah. The question is that this House has considered e-petition 276425 relating to the sale of fireworks. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order, order.